Hi there, it's Tyler from Nelly Security, and in this video, we're going to dig deep into the web interface of our Uniview Fixed Lens IP security cameras. First, we're going to log into our camera's interface via the web browser. Now, this is just the camera itself plugged into a PoE switch. So, if you don't have an NVR, if you're going to be using this camera as a standalone camera, this is exactly what you'll see. So, the first thing we'll want to do is open up Easy Tools here. Easy Tools is Uniview's configuration tool, which is going to let us view and modify the IP address of our Uniview products. So as you can see, this actually pulls in data from our H-series cameras as well. But what we're going to be looking for is that Uniview model number, which is this one down here at the very bottom. IPC 3618SR3 DPF28M. Now that is our 4K fixed lens turret camera, and that's the one we're going to be looking at today. But keep in mind, this interface is going to be the same uh, across the board no matter which camera you have. So I'm going to take this IP address 192.168.145 and I'm going to plug that into my web browser. And now we're going to log in. The default username is admin and our default password is 123456. And now when we very first log in, it's going to prompt us to change our password. Uh, we're going to keep it as 123456 for now. So I'll just turn that off. And we can see here this is our live view, the main view that we see once we log into the camera's interface. From the live view, we have a couple of buttons down here at the bottom. We have our full screen button. We have a digital zoom. We also have our recording button. This will allow us to take a recording. And here we have our screenshot button which will take a screenshot. These recordings that we take from the live screen will be saved locally on our computer. And here in just a minute, we'll jump into the menu system and see where we can set those parameters. When we move the mouse around the image, we see this uh, overlay down in the bottom right hand corner with some helpful information that tells us our frame rates, our bit rate, uh, our codec that we're currently recording in, the resolution that it's currently recording. We do have the option to click this pin button here, which will leave that overlay up all the time if we want it to. And I think this guy's trying to get someone's attention, so I'll be right back. All right, we got that guy taken care of, so let's go ahead and continue. We have our proportional buttons here. We can stretch it to fit the screen. We can scale it to fit the screen so that uh, the proportions are kept, or just keep the original proportions here, which because it's 4K, you know, it's going to be very large. So we're going to go ahead and keep it at scale. Next to that we have our mainstream, substream, and third stream buttons if we need to change the resolution. Once we hit that substream, you can see that now we are at 720 by 576. And if we hit the third stream, it's just getting really ugly. Now we are at 352 by 288. Um, so we're definitely going to keep that in the mainstream. And again, we'll see later how we can change these substreams and third streams. Uh, maybe we want the substream to be 1080p instead of 4K, we can manually set that. I'm gonna see if they need some help. And now the last thing I wanna show you here on this live view is this image button. This is essentially just a shortcut button. If you click this button, it's going to take you directly to the image settings in the setup menu. So it's a nice feature to have that there, just really quick access to these image settings here. And that's about it for this live view screen. It's pretty simplified and minimalistic. There's not a whole lot here. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the next menu, which is playback. And unfortunately, these cameras do not have an SD card slot. So there is nothing to play back right now because this isn't connected to an NVR. If this was connected to an NVR, you would want to access the playback menu from the NVR's interface itself. So you're probably not going to be spending a whole lot of time in this playback menu on the camera. So let's go ahead and move on to the setup menu. One unique feature about these cameras is that they are very customizable. So if you're kind of a tinkerer, if you like to play around with your camera settings, there is a lot for you to dive into here, but most of it is beyond the scope of this video. So just know that there is a lot for you to explore apart from what you see in the next few minutes. So let's check out this menu system. You know, there are gonna be certain menus that you access more commonly than other menus. And here, Uniview has put all of those most common settings in this common section. So if there's something that you want to accomplish pretty quickly, 
and it's something that you use often, it's most likely going to be here in this common menu or over here in common configuration. We have our basic info, and then we have our local parameters, which is going to be the machine that you are currently using to access the interface. We have our intelligent mark, which we can set to disabled or enabled. I'm going to leave that enabled because that's going to allow us to see our smart event markers later on when we set up some smart events such as line crossing, intrusion, etc. Down here we also have our recording and snapshot settings, and this is where we can set the file location to save our recordings and our images. Next we have our network settings, which we can make this DHCP or static. I'm going to go ahead and make this a static IP address and leave it at 45 so we don't get kicked off. So next up we have our time settings, and you can see that the current time on this camera is 4.26 p.m., uh, but the time of this recording is 11.26 p.m. So I could set this as central time, which is where we are currently. Or I can just make this easy and click sync with computer time. We do have our server settings here and our on-screen display settings. This is a pretty unique OSD because we can pretty much customize everything about it. We can move them around on the screen. We can decide what we want displayed on the screen. We can even add in a, uh, a custom field if we want to say something like, I don't know, Nelly's security. We can move area two down here. Let's say we want the camera's name. We can say back parking lot. We'll move that down here to this corner. We can also add a scroll. So if we want to say something like, this is a video demonstrating features on the Uniview fixed lens cameras. Kind of down here, maybe underneath areas two and one. We can also have just the date, just the time. We can upload a picture to display over the screen or over a part of the screen. And we can also have people counting show up on the OSD, which we will get more into that later when we look at the smart events available on these cameras. So now if I go back to the live view, we can easily see all those changes that I just made. If you want to get really customizable, you can change the font size and the font color, and you can change how these text looks. You can make it have a background. You can make it stroked. However you want that to look, you have complete control over this OSD. The next menu here is user management, where you can add and manage your users. Pretty straightforward. Let's jump into the network section. This is all stuff that you can explore on your own as we're not going to get too in depth in this video. Um, I will point out Easy Cloud. We showed you this in the last video, but this is where you will turn on Easy Cloud and scan the QR code to get mobile access on your phone. So let's go ahead and jump into the video section here. Now here on video, we have all of our video settings available to us on each of our streams. So we can change this video compression, for instance, to H265. We can change our frame rate if we need to, bit rate, image quality, all these different video settings. We can also do this for the sub and the third streams. So for instance, we may only need a mainstream and a substream. We can just turn off that third stream altogether. Now for our substream, I don't want this to be D1. I want this to be 1080p. So we can set that. We'll keep the, the video compression for the substream at 264. Frame rate at 1080p actually goes down to 15 frames per second which is fine, this is just our substream. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna hit save. Next up, we have our snapshot menu here. You are going to want to make sure that this setting is turned on if you want to export images from your camera to your computer automatically. And we'll look more at that here when we get to the storage menu. And now let's jump into the image settings. You can see we can adjust the brightness and saturation of the image fine tune the contrast and the sharpness, really play around with this to make sure that we're getting a nice clean image that we're happy with. Under exposure, you can see that these cameras do have true WDR. We can turn that on and mess around with the level. So if you do have some areas of your image that vary in brightness from very dark to very bright, you might wanna turn on this WDR setting and play around with it a bit. We do have a privacy mask. If there's an area on the image that we don't necessarily want to be visible all the time, uh, we can just mask over it here. Now here is our intelligent menu, and we'll come back here in a minute and play around with some of these, but I just wanted to show you here all the smart events that are available to you with these cameras. 
We have line crossing and intrusion, object removal, object left behind. But here are a couple of interesting features with Uniview. We have face detection and people counting. Now here's the catch. If you want to use these cameras to recognize when it sees human faces or to count the amount of people walking in or out of an area, you can't use the other smart events. So see if I enable face detection here, all the other smart events are grayed out and these are inaccessible. Same thing with people counting. I can't access any of these. But again, we'll come back to this here in a bit. Let's move on to events. And this is going to be our not smart events, uh, essentially motion detection, which we can draw an area here, either the whole screen or a portion of the screen. We can also change the detection mode to grid, which gives us this familiar red grid that we may be more used to. And we can deselect and select areas as needed. Now we do have a storage menu. Now, as I said earlier, there is no edge storage on this camera. So there's no slot for a micro SD card and no way for you to record locally to the camera. However, if you still want to save video and images automatically, you can do that through setting this up with a NAS or through FTP. You can see that we have the option of setting this up with a NAS or a network attached storage. As you can see, it's our only option because again, there's no SD card on this camera. This is essentially an external hard drive that any device can access that's connected to the network. To save video footage directly from this camera, triggered by, say, a, a line crossing detection or just basic motion detection, this is going to be the only way to do that. However, in the FTP menu, we can set this up using a local server on our computer if we just want to save image snapshots from those smart or basic events. Again, like I said earlier, your snapshot setting is going to need to be enabled for this to work. Now, I'm not going to get into the nitty and gritty details here. That's definitely something for another video. But you can use something simple and free like FileZilla to set up a server on your PC. You can set up your camera to communicate with that server to save these snapshots locally to your computer. This is just a quick and simple way to get automatic snapshots based on motion detection sent directly to your computer from this camera, but it will only work as long as that server is running on your computer. Next up, we have our security tab, all stuff that we're not gonna get into here. And we have our maintenance tab where we can upgrade our camera's firmware. We can restore our camera to default. We can import or export our camera's settings. And if we're just having some trouble with our camera, we can come here to restart the device. Well, I hope this video helps you learn a thing or two about our Uniview fixed lens security cameras. I know it was a lot to take in. These cameras are packed with features, but stick with us because next time we're gonna jump into the NVR interface. We're gonna play around with some smart events and we're gonna check out the playback menu. If you have any questions at all about these products, feel free to call us or email us anytime and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you next time when we wrap up this series. Hey guys, thanks for watching this Uniview Fixed Lens Features Overview video. This is the fourth video in our Uniview Fixed Lens Camera series. If you'd like to see the rest of the videos in this series, feel free to click the thumbnail on your screen now. If you want to be notified the next time we upload a video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell down below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.